real YouTubers have cool video ideas, then then they forget about them for like a month. I don't know what this is. Wolfoy VGC? Wolfoy VGC? I don't know. Um, anyway, okay, so there I was, like a month ago. I thought that I, it would be a cool idea to make a video on some of the worst Pokemon opinions that people hold. Um, so here, this is the tweet. July 13th, okay? <laughs> Send me the absolute worst Pokemon opinion you can think of, dot dot dot, for YouTube. And then I forgot about this. I forgot that I did this. So I never actually recorded anything about it. The uh, date of recording is August 6th. So yesterday, my good friend Trey um, messaged in my Discord server. He's like, hey, where's the worst opinion Pokemon video? Video. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, thanks, Trey. <laughs> now we're getting this. So if you enjoyed this video, please type thank you, Trey, in the comments. Anyway. So I've gone through, um, and I've selected ones that I think would be funny to talk about. But yeah, this is all I offered. I didn't actually specify people had to hold the opinions themselves. I was hoping it was actually, like, um, opinions people held themselves. But I didn't specify that. So we can see some things, like, already in the initial ones um, that, like, obviously no one would ever think, right? Just, like, some of, the, some of, like, this one, for example. Like, nobody thinks the first one. Nobody thinks the third one, for sure. Um... For sure, for sure, for sure. So anyway, with that being said, let's talk about some of these bad opinions. And so I've selected ones that I think are bad and some ones that I think are good. So we're going to go through these. Um, I really like this one. This is Jamie. Uh, Jamie's a competitive player, uh, well-known, well-respected VGC player. Uh, and he says, there's no diversity in competitive Pokemon. I'm reading this in the, in the voice that I think he would use here. Or in the voice that I think of the person that he... This is an, I, I would be very surprised if this was an opinion that Jamie actually held. Uh, I think more likely this is... This is one of the common criticisms of VGC, and Jamie is mocking it, as I think he rightfully should, because it's a very, um... <laughs> it's a, I, I think it's... Yeah, I mean, you'll see. So anyway. There's no diversity in competitive Pokemon. Everyone uses legendaries in the same six Pokemon. Even in 17, when World's Finals was 12 unique Pokemon, there wasn't enough diversity. Not enough people are using Beedrill and Grenville. That takes real skill. Um, this is like the, the day one. Like, someone doesn't know anything about VGC, and this is their criticism of it. I've been reading this for years, for literally years, because, like, this is all, like, YouTube, VGC on YouTube has evolved a bit, like, we have, like, I think the understanding of the game, and, you know, we're lucky that we had people like, um, Cybertron, for example, like, pushing kind of the competitive scene and providing VGC content for years, um, and so, like, I think that VGC doesn't suffer from this as much, but this is still something that I, I have to read occasionally, and this was all it was back in the day, just, like, and, uh, like, if I remember, I have a match versus uh, Alex Underhill. It's 2017 World's Day 1, round 6, I want to say. I think it's round 6. Um, and it's streamed. And so, because it was streamed, it was recorded. And if you go to the comments on the match, there are people complaining about not enough people using creative Pokemon. And there are 12 unique Pokemon in that set. Alex and I have uh, a full 6 Pokemon unique from each other. And people are still complaining about how there isn't enough diversity in Pokemon. So I think that it's kind of just this narrative that exists without really a basis. This is one of my least favorite opinions because number one, even if people did use the same Pokemon, like think about what you're actually saying, right? Just, just please use your brain for 10 seconds. Let's say everyone actually used the same six Pokemon, right? Then it would be relatively easy to build a counter team and then you could win tournaments, which means there's no incentive for everyone to play the same thing. Right? That's how Pokemon works. That's how that's why Pokemon like Executor and Pachirisu and, and um, you know, archetypes like Rayogre are able to thrive because when metagames are more centralized or when, you know, metagames favor certain things, I wouldn't say 2014 was centralized to be fair, so Pachirisu might not be a great example, but like in each metagame there are there are there are specific niches that Pokemon can fill. So, you know, even if everyone did use the same Pokemon, the metagame would shift in such a way that it would counter those Pokemon, right? Because if I said, okay, everyone has to use this team of six, or 12, uh, six of these 12 Pokemon, people would just counter that. And then they'd win tournaments. And then people would use the counter teams, right? And, and, and people would be less incentivized to use the team that was popular. Just think for 10 seconds before you post. Just think, please. Holy cow. Um, and that's not even talking about how it's not fair to say everyone uses the same six Pokemon because the EVs, the moves, the itemization, how the spreads interact with each other, how the speeds interact with each other, especially, all those things are very crucial and function like change how Pokemon plays. Ray Rizzo changed the meta, changed like, jeez, uh, like four, five meta games with using defensive Thunderous instead of offensive Thunderous. It was a novel change that changed the game forever just because he put defense EVs on his Thunderous instead of offense EVs. Like, that changed the game for four years or something. Insane. So, anyway. This is one of my least favorite opinions. Thank you, Jamie, for bringing it to light. 
Um, this is Paul. Paul's a VC player who, um, he was known, uh, as pioneering the Top Ogre, um, which was a popular core back in 2010. I think, I believe it was Scarf Kyogre, and then, I think it was actually Technician hit him on top. Um, but it was pretty strong, as I recall, and, uh, I, this is before I played. But, yeah, basically, VGC in its, uh, in Gen 4 didn't have Team Preview. Um, there were, it was very different back then. You could also switch around your items. So, for example, like, you had six items in your team, but where they went could change after each... I don't know if it was each best of three. I don't even know if they had best of three back then. I, I'm going to be completely honest. Like, I started in 11. So, eight, 8 to 10 is um, is interesting. But I think team... I can't imagine playing VGC without team preview. Um, I think it would be a nightmare. Like, imagine you're playing as your opponent. You have no idea what they have. Uh, and then all of a sudden, like, their last Pokemon, Shedinja. And you're like, oh, well, I guess I lose then. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I think I think that's pretty uh, pretty bad, personally. <laughs> um, however, like, I don't know. I, I, I definitely could see how it would be fun, and, and I, I definitely could see how it be, would be exciting. But, like, I also think it encourages strategies that are, like... Like, I think you're better off just bringing, like... You probably just have a set core of four. Especially because it was best of one back then, most of the time. So, um, I think just having, like, a set core of four, where, like, it just you're just trying to cover everything, is more encouraged. And I, I personally don't think I would enjoy that, but... I would be down to have, like, a no-team preview tournament if that were something that was possible. Like, just to try it out and see what it feels like. But I personally don't like this one very much. I, I think I like team preview. Um, here's one from Chef. So, Chef is a player that I met uh, at Berlin Internationals 2019. Um, very good player. Uh, really nice guy. Um, and he says, No one who plays competitive Pokemon is actually that good at Pokemon. If millions of people started playing, every current VGC player would fade into obscurity very quickly, with a few exceptions, mainly me and Wolf VGC. Now, this is a, an opinion I haven't heard very much, but this is something Marcus and I talked about back in the day, which is, like, not necessarily in these terms, but just basically, like, Pokemon's a really, really hard game, and, and I, at least I feel, I don't want to speak for Marcus, but I know that I feel like the peak of Pokemon has not been reached, and there are certain players who make me feel like they, like, they have, like, understood another level of the game. Like, Vieira is one of them, the 2015 world champion. Whenever I watch him play, I'm like... It, like, takes me a little bit to figure out how he's even thinking. And when I do, I, like, I feel like I'm, like, looking through the Matrix or something. So, um, I'll, I would don't know if I'd say, you know... If millions of players start... People started playing any game, which isn't, um... Well, actually, no, that's not true. If a million players started playing Melee, Leffen would still be at the top, you know? Mango would still be at the top, right? Um... And that might just be a factor of, like, you know, Pokemon is a game with a lot of um, variants, and, and just being the better player than somebody doesn't really matter that much in terms of who's going to win the set, um, in my opinion. These are just my opinions. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think this is probably true. Like, if a bunch of people started playing, I don't think that nobody would be at the top. Like, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that everyone would fade into obscurity, but I, I do feel like there is a, like, this game has a long ways to go in terms of reaching its, its uh, max. So, yeah, I don't hate this opinion. Uh, this is this is Trey. He's the one who reminded me of this uh, video. He said the ideal state of competitive play is two players endlessly switching because it is not optimal to consume PP. I'm not going to talk about consume PP um, here because yeah, uh, yep. But I mean, I don't think that this is like maybe there's probably situations where it is not optimal to consume PP. Um, but in general, doing damage is the main goal of Pokemon. So I think there's like. I think that, I feel like Marcus showed me this, I feel like somebody built a bot to like ladder in singles a while ago, and then like in Gen 7 maybe, or maybe it was Gen 8, but I think it was Gen 7, and like, then it played against itself, like, and they saw what would happen, and I think it ended up in like a, it just switched forever, I think, somebody told me about this, I like watched the battle, it just like, they kept switching forever, um, because it was like Gliscor, Amoongus, or Gliscor plus Regenerator, and so like, yeah, basically, like, it was three Pokemon that couldn't hit each other, and they just kept switching between them, both bots, so, um, and it, like, had Regenerator, so, yeah, I think, I think it, like, went to time, or, like, Shodown has, like, a turn limit, I think, it was, like, 5,000 turns or something, so, in some situations, it might be optimal to not consume PP, but, um, in some situations, in most situations, I think consuming PP is optimal, uh, yeah, optimal, Adrox says we need more Charizard formies, this one got a lot of interaction, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think we need more Charizard Formies. I think we have plenty of Charizard Formies. I don't need to talk that long about this one. Be my live or my okay, I'm recording. <sighs> um, I don't think we have to talk that much about this one, um, because yeah, it's like I, I, just, I don't know. I don't think anybody, like even the comments here, um, it's time to stop. <laughs> well, here's some Charizard fans. <laughs> um, so I mean, I don't mind if they they add more Charizard, but. I don't really want it, you know, like, it's not, it's not doing anything for me, you know. Here's Thomas, she says, uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver ruin Gen 4. 
Um, I didn't play, I actually have never, I played Heart Gold, I played Soul Silver and didn't finish it. I never beat the Kanto for me. I've, I've never played Gen 2. So I don't feel like this is one that I can personally comment on. Um, however, I think because it's in quotes that she disagrees with it, and I, I do have faith in her opinion. So, uh, I'm going to say, uh, the jury's out on this one. Gabby, Gabby, VGC commentator, longtime VGC player, been playing longer than I have. Um, and she says, bring back Hulk Hogan as a commentator. Now, some of you might not know that Hulk Hogan used to commentate VGC. I actually have a meaning to make a video on this, so if you want to see um, some footage of Hulk Hogan commentating, this is not a joke. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan used to commentate Pokemon tournaments, and as I recall, he likes Snorlax a lot. Um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about this, let me know, because, yeah, but I, I completely agree. I don't see how this is a bad Pokemon opinion. This is an amazing Pokemon opinion. I don't think I'd like Hulk Hogan, like, all the time, but, like, you know, like, because... Not that there's a Hulk, if you're watching this, I love you, I'm a big fan, okay? Don't take this the wrong way, but I, my understanding is that his Pokemon knowledge might not be up to par with, you know, some of our more um, established commentators, and, and that's fine, I think he can still offer a lot. However, um, yeah, I, I, I think he'd do a good job as, as maybe a co-host with Anna, so, um, yeah, I feel like they would have good synergy, for sure. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on. Um... This one messed me up. This is Bill. Bill's an, he's an amazing artist. Uh, I recommend you check him out. Uh, he does vectoring. I don't know what that means, but he does do it. Um, so anyway, he says, Pokemon landscapes are weird looking. If Sudowoodo is supposed to look like a tree, then tree should look like Sudowoodo's. This one messed me up because I was like, wait, he's right. Like, if you look, like, isn't that the lore? Like, Sudowoodo looks like a tree and you use watering can to, like, turn it into Sudowoodo. But then, like, why don't the trees, why don't any other trees look like Sudowoodo? I totally agree with this one. I, I like I this one. I I thought about this one for a while after I read it. Um. L L says uh, I offered to tweet for people in the Discord and the Twitter, so I bring you this. Sorry, LOL. Uh, Zernon was a healthy and underused strategy that improved the metagame's enjoyment factor. I am going to assume that Blue did not play 2016. I'm going to assume Blue didn't play not 2019. I'll be honest. Um, Zernon has been so incredibly dominant in e like every format that it existed in. Uh, like. Zerndon, for those of you who don't know, was the primary restricted duo in 2016 and for the majority of 2019 as well. Um, well, actually, majority of Ultra Series, I would say. Oh. Um, so, yeah, like to say that it's underused, I think this must be made in jest because I don't think anyone who knows anything about Zerndon would ever describe it as underused. Whether it improved the metagame's enjoyment factor, I personally disagree with it a little bit more subjective, but to say that it's underused, although still subjective because what determines if you're if you've used enough um yeah that's uh that's not something that i can get behind personally klefki is a great okay so i didn't i only chose this for what part of it um klefki is a great design dynamax is great for metagame and if we use women to cut to pre-evolution cottony nothing would change about the metagame so I, I do disagree with this one i i don't have a problem with klefki's design i don't think it's super great but i don't think it's super awful either um i don't personally have an issue with it design isn't the thing that i really look for when it comes to pokemon so that's just kind of me um Dynamax is great for the metagame. Now, I don't hate Dynamax. I personally think I wouldn't mind playing a metagame with no Gymix just for once. Just bring me back to 2012, 2011, Gen 5. Great competitive metagames, 11, 12, 13. Well, I didn't like 13. Most people didn't like 11, but 12 was really good. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I, I don't think Dynamax is bad for the metagame, personally. Like, I think it's an interesting mechanic. I like it way more than Mega Evolution. I've talked about this before. No surprises there. However, Women's Guts Pre-Evolution Cottony doesn't learn Tailwind. It's something that I learned. So... Um, yeah, that is objectively wrong. If, if Cottony got Tailwind, I also feel like Sash is kind of important to Whimsicott, but yeah, if Cottony got Tailwind, then things would change, or then maybe you could argue this, but nah. Talonflame was never, this is Cats. Uh, Cat says, Talonflame was never oppressive, pressing Dark Void was fun, and Dallas, which is not actually that bad. I disagree with all three of these. Talonflame was incredibly oppressive in 2014. It was a stupid Pokemon. Um, they nerfed it significantly, so, uh, yeah, it did get pretty nerfed in 20, well, starting in Generation 7, but it was, like, we had a format where, like, the best Intimidator was Scarf Salamence for a while. Um, and Choice Band, Brave Bird, Talonflame, or Life Orb, Tailwind, Brave Bird, Talonflame with Mega Kangaskhan was a nightmare. And it was super oppressive, and, uh, yeah, I don't like it. Dark Void, pressing Dark Void was might be fun, but playing in a metagame with Dark Void in general was not fun. Uh, and Allies, which is not actually that bad, that's the one that I'm like, okay, maybe. Like, Allies was just super stupid, but it's not... It's not actually that bad. I would probably agree with that. It's just super dumb. It's bad, but it's not that bad. I can get behind that one. Um... Nidoking will be a big threat in the restricted meta. There's like one or two things. It doesn't Oko and Prankster with Tailwind and Modest. Prankster, Tailwind, and with Modest, it can outspeed Jolly Zach. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with this one. Um, 
if you have like Whimsicott and Nidoking on the field, you're gonna have a lot of other problems. And like you play against Zamungus, and you're like, oh well, guess I'll lose. Um, additionally, if you die to Max Nido King, you don't get your sheer force boost, and you start taking life orb recoil. So, um, I don't agree. That's just the fact of the matter. I don't agree. Um, <clears throat> moving on. I like this opinion. It's stupid that Alola Ninetales is part fairy and Kintonia Ninetales isn't. Such a missed opportunity would be the only fire fairy type that we all need but don't deserve. I think this is a really cool opinion. I don't think Ninetales is that good of a Pokemon that giving a fairy type would make it, like, broken per se it would definitely be a buff uh like it would definitely be a pretty big buff however i don't think that would be broken um and i think it would, i like i kind of like it like right like if, if alola nine tails is fairy why isn't cantonia nine tails um i understand that like you know the whole point is that the pokemon have different types but i honestly think what happened is that they made alola nine tails gen 7 and made it fairy type and like they'd already introduced fairy type in gen 6 so they weren't going to go and retroactively change nine tails um however yeah like it would be cool if, if nine tails was part fairy um, 66 singles could never be the official competitive format because it's too slow and best of three wouldn't be possible. I'll also raise the stakes. 66 is much easier to get good at, although it's probably just as hard to be one of the best at. I agree with these opinions. Um, you could never play, this is why you can't play singles, right? Um, we, you couldn't play best of three, uh, in a tournament setting. And, and yeah, like, even if they fixed the awful sword and shield timer, you could never play singles as a competitive format. So th yeah, for anyone wondering why a lot of it is time constraints, um, like, we have a VGC match will take 20 minutes. We have a 20 minute game timer. You can't play a singles match in 20 minutes. You can't, I mean, that's, that's a problem, right? Right now, um, 66 singles, the only in-game timer that you can use is, is 20 minutes and, and people hate it. And it basically killed Wi-Fi battling. So, um, yeah, and you could not do best of three, uh, with that. So it would be pretty bad. Um, I don't know about the second part. I, 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 I used to play singles. I was okay at it. Um, I was like good, but I was also like 13 years old. So like, I don't remember how actually, how good I actually was, but, um, yeah, I probably I agree that it, it probably is it probably is really hard to be one of the best, but it, yeah, maybe it, it probably is also easier to get relatively good at. So, um, but I don't know. I'm not a singles player, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, <clears throat> we get this tweet sent to us on behalf of Joey, who says, "Wish Amoongus had U-turn." They gave a pollen puff. Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough for you, Joey? God, if Amoongus had U-turn, we'd have major issues. I mean, it would still have four moves, slot syndrome, but even still, that'd be a nightmare. Um. There should be more randomness in VGC. I could elaborate, but trying to keep this opinion as spicy as possible. I, I don't agree with this. I think randomness is not uh, is not good. We've been making positive strides. I say we, but the game developers have been making positive strides and giving us more tools to manage the randomness um, and to reducing randomness as well. Like sleep used to be so broken. Um, terrain is a good countermeasure to a lot of the blogna that comes with status. Um, there's so many ways that the game has changed and, and that they've been trying to reduce the effects of randomness. Thunder Wave got nerfed, Dark Void was removed. I think that's a really positive change. I think it's really good for the game. I don't think more randomness is healthy in any way. And I, I don't, I mean, my, like, yeah. My ideal Pokemon game is a game where, like, the better player wins, you know, most of the time, right? Um, and, like, at least more of the time than they do right now because, yeah. Like, you should, like, as few games as possible should be determined by luck, in my opinion. Um, but, like, I don't mind having some randomness in VGC. Like, we're going to talk about this a little bit more later, but I don't mind some luck, but I do think that less luck is typically more preferable. So I don't, I don't agree with this one at all. I think it's a bad opinion. <clears throat> all right. T Smeargle in 2016 was fair and balanced. Y'all just didn't want to use Crafty Shield with your cleft keys and opposing Smeargles. So I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that this person didn't play 2016 because we did run Crafty Shield, and it still wasn't enough. Like, it, Crafty Shield is a move that... It's cleft key signature move, a.k.a. Smeargle can also learn it, um, and it blocks all non-damaging moves effectively so it blocks dark void it blocks spore it blocks taunt all that stuff people ran uh crafty shield it was a common move on smeargle um and i ran klefki though i did not run crafty shield but i had safeguard to help with smeargle anyway so <clears throat> yeah that works as well but it didn't matter like it didn't start to stop smeargle like if you're crafty it just like it gave you tools in certain instances but like that was it it was just a tool and since smeargle was often paired with kangaskhan as well I don't remember the speed interactions between Crafty Shield and, and uh, Fagot. I don't remember which one is faster. Um, but I, I just remember people like, you know, like let's say they predict you to Crafty Shield and then they just power up punch Oko your Smeargle and you know, Spiky Shield and then next turn they Dark Void. Like it, was, it definitely was not enough. So yeah, we did use Crafty Shield. It was a, te it was a tech, um, but it wasn't enough. A game with other regions would be a great idea. Now this is one that I don't personally feel like qualified to speak on. Um, Drawman's Lev, you know. Um, but yeah, basically, like, I don't know if this, I think this would be sick, like, if we had a huge Pokemon game, but, um, there would be some major issues, like, level scaling, right? Um, you know, 
Uh, there would be a lot of like, and I, I don't think the developers would ever do it. It sounds like it sounds like way too massive of a project, but I think it would be super, super sick if it, if it ever existed. But yeah, probably not in the works. But yeah, apparently this is a bad opinion because I asked for bad opinions and this is what was said. So I, I this isn't something I'm holding my breath for. Like I'm fine never getting this, but I think it'd be cool as a concept at least. I don't I don't know practically how good it would be, but apparently this is a bad opinion. So might be. Um, Vinny, you should move to triple battles. The thought you place your Pokemon in becomes far more important, adding an extra level of skill to the gameplay. This is atrocious. I don't know much about triple battles, but they suck. They're awful. I believe, like, the Pokemon on the left can't target the Pokemon on the right. Um, so, like, for example, like, you're... I don't, I don't remember exactly how it works. I just know they're a freaking nightmare. Like, I, these are so bad. Like, triple battles are not... They're, they're fun, they're fun, right? If you're playing, like, a for fun tournament, or you're playing with friends for fun, play triple battles. Like, it's cool. It's a cool concept. But in practice, horrible. So, like, in a tournament setting, very, very bad. Like, this is, this would have been super bad. Awful opinion. Basically, the further back you go, the lamer the designs get. I'd rather have something more interesting than it's a cat with a dot or rock with face. Modern ones are so much more interesting and not just cartoon, animal, plus element. Um... Huh, so basically, this is a cool one. I don't feel qualified to speak on design, um, but this is a kind of like a popular opinion, right? And I've seen this po this uh, kind of this idea brought up before where it's like, um, you know, people who complain about Pokemon like Klefki and Vanillux, like, you know, if those Pokemon come up first, people say, people complain about Pokemon like Grimer and, um, you know, Voltorb and Geodude and, and some of those like, you know, more uninspired Pokemon. I don't ever have a problem with the designs. I don't normally have a problem with designs. Um, because it's not the thing that I play Pokemon for, it's not something I particularly care about. Um, but I can definitely, I think this is a valid opinion, um, for sure. I, I don't know if I'd, like, I don't know. I think, like, the Pokemon are iconic, right? And it's definitely, like, some nostalgia factor there, but, um, yeah. So, I don't know, I think it's an interesting opinion, for sure. I'm not gonna call this awful, for sure. There will never be a viable pure normal type. We've already talked about both Smeargle and Kangaskhan in this video. I think this must be someone trolling, but, yeah. Porygon Z, Porygon 2. Like, pure normal type is actually... Um, is actually pretty good, uh, typing. If the Pokemon it has, it's either, like, it's either, like, most of the time it's, like, a bulky Pokemon, but it, it can be offensive as well. There is, in fact, the right amount of water in Hoenn. Um, when water type should do super effective damage to steel type. Water's already pretty good. I don't agree with the second point, but I don't have an issue with the water in Hoenn. I don't think it's too much water, so, yeah. Okay. Incineroar is one of the best designed Pokemon. I said normally I don't complain about design. For me, what I look for, how expressive, charming, and alive a Pokemon feel... While 3D models don't feel like they have that much life, Incineroar has one of the most expressive 3D models. And here's the kicker. He was my first starter, by the way, lol. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you on this one. Oh, no. This absolute... Like, there's... He opened his mouth. This isn't expressive. He opened his mouth. I could open my mouth if I wanted. I don't want to, so I won't do it. But I could open my mouth. Look at this. I'm Incineroar. No, not expressive. Not expressive at all. He crossed his arms and smiled. I don't I don't like it. Chimeco has more personality than this thing. I hate I hate Incineroar. Stupid mon. Um I think this is probably he was my first starter bias. Garbo, Garbo one. Ultra Sun and Moon were some of the best games. Almost all fire starters are lame, should then becoming human later on. Japanese Pokemon names are often much better than English ones. Incineroar shouldn't exist. 3D Pokemon is better than Pixel Pokemon. Game Freak hates Ice Types. Okay, let's go to Race Order. Game Freak does hate Ice Types. It, it, I wouldn't say they hate Ice Types. I would say they hate the Ice Typing. There are some good Ice Types that if Ice is better typing would be phenomenal. Like Mamoswine, maybe even Weavile, Alola, Ninetales. All those Pokemon are like just at the cusp and are held back by their typing. Lapras. Um, But Ice, ice as a whole, overall type is not treated very well by Game Freak. Uh, 3D Pokemon is better than Pixel Pokemon. Mm, depends on what you're looking for. I don't, I'm not commenting on that one, I don't know. Incineroar shouldn't exist, I'd agree with that. Uh, Japanese Pokemon games are often much better than English ones. Don't really know, don't know the many Japanese Pokemon names. Almost all fire starters are lame due to them becoming humanoid later on. Um, Charizard's not humanoid, checkmate. Typhlosion isn't humanoid. Are you just talking about the fire fighting ones? What's, the, Delphox isn't humanoid, that's a fox? What's, what's this one? Oh, Cinderachi? Okay, yeah, that one's kind of human. Um... Oh, guys, did you ever realize that Cinderachi is also a fire and fighting type because it gets high jump kick and pretend? Thonk. Um, Ultra Sun and Moon were some of the best games. Ultra Sun and Moon, honestly, like, were one of my... It might be my least favorite gaming, like, experience of all time. Not talking about tournament, but, in, like, just playing through a game. Absolutely miserable garbage games. Like, I, I had to beat them in order to unlock the Z-Crystals. 
it was miserable it was actually horrible they're actually some of the worst games i've ever played in my entire life i hate and i, I think to be fair it's because i had to play them and also it's because they're just entire remakes of sun and moon if i started with them maybe i wouldn't have hated it but it was not fun Mega Evolution was a terrible mechanic that broke the game's balance, choosing to give power boost to fan favorite Pokemon that have always been good instead of ones in dire need of a boost. Tyranitar and Garchomp instead of Tauros or Mag Cargo, which evolved from Sugma. Um, yeah, like, uh, I agree with this opinion. Mega Evolution was a bad mechanic. I don't like it. It definitely didn't help the game's balance. It was a bit, a bit better in Gen 7, but in Gen 6 especially, it was awful, and I agree. Like, I mean, it's not like Titar Mega or Garchomp Mega were broken or anything, like, but Metagross and Ment would have been better examples, probably, but, like, um... Yeah, like, I mean, so it would have been cool if all the Megas were on bad Pokemon. I think that would have been cool. And if they weren't, like, super broken. Like, Kangas got on Maui Lele, they made them too strong. But, um, yeah, like, Pokemon like Tauros and Macargo. You know, maybe those could have been cool. Um, and they did give a lot of bad Pokemon Megas, but we talked about this in the Mega Evolution tier list. Like, it's not enough. You know, like, it's, there's, you can't, giving, because Mega Evolution has a high opportunity cost, because you can only bring, you can only Mega Evolve one Pokemon per game. It doesn't matter if you give 40 bad Pokemon good Megas, if you give 5 broken ones, because no one's going to use the bad ones, so, yeah. Lotus is the worst Pokemon ever created. This isn't even an opinion, this is a fact. I know for a fact this one's a bad opinion, because Infezant is the worst Pokemon ever created, so, um, yeah, moving on. Control W, please. Gen 1 actually sucks, but you guys are just pretending to like it because it was first. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't played Gen 1 in a while. Um, I did play, I, play, I never played the original Red, uh, Red and Blue games, I did play Fire Red. Um, it was my first Pokemon game, was Fire Red, or maybe it was Leaf Green. Um, I like Gen 1, I don't have any issues with it, I, I do think it's kind of iconic, but, um, again, maybe it's nostalgia factor, for sure, so I can't speak to that. RNG completely nullifies strategic decision-making, and because of that, the game can't be competitive. This is one of my least favorite opinions, um, I could rant, I could make a whole video on this, maybe I will at some point, but the real thing that I want to say about that is that there's so many counter-examples of players being consistent, um, and of player, you know, like, I don't think you can argue that the players aren't consistent because or that the game can't be competitive when, when there's such consistency we have a three-time world champion the same player won worlds three times consecutively i don't know how you can and that was when the game was more rng dependent in my opinion um i don't think i don't know how you can argue that 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 you know the game can't be competitive when we have a literal three-time world champion and ray wins 10 11 12 seijin who wins in 14 got second in 11 and I won in 16 and got second in 12 at Worlds. These are all Worlds performances. Not to mention players like Vieira. I mean, there's so many good players who have done um, consistently well across formats, across years, um, at multiple World Championships. Like, even now, there's players who are extremely consistent, um, you know, like, who have won multiple internationals and who have, you know, like, had really, really strong seasons. I, I think this is, this is an awful opinion. Um, but here's one that I really like. Whether you get lucky or not in Pokemon is skill-based. I agree. There is luck in Pokemon, but managing that luck is one of the key factors. For example, if I run a team with like a bunch of inaccurate moves, I'm asking to, to lose games because I'm missing moves, you know? So that's just one basic example, but how you play and how you build your team depend, like that will determine a lot how much variance goes for or against you. So, and certain teams are better at getting lucky and certain teams are better at getting unlucky. Um, and that is a 100% of skill. Not every team gets the same amount of luck against it. Um, a team that always moves second is more likely to get flinched frozen um you know stuff like that and so yeah i really like this opinion so we're closing the, the video on this one so um those are all the those are all the opinions that i had uh i would just went through the thread picked up some that i thought were good so uh let me know if you like this kind of video um it's certainly fun to do and uh, like i don't know it's just it's interesting to see what people think so um if you want to see more content like this let me know down below and um i think that's all i have to say thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye